Hello everybody and welcome to this video on adjusting entries and this is actually a continuation of previous videos that we watched. Now to refresh your memory, adjusting entries are entries that are required at the end of an accounting period to recognize revenues and expenses that occur in a different period than when the cash is received or paid. So again, it's really important that you pay attention to timing and notice when things are happening to determine how we're gonna record these adjusting entries. Now, in the previous videos, we discussed three key concepts that you need to know for adjusting entries, the time period assumption, the revenue recognition principle and the expense recognition or matching principle. So if you need a refresher on those, go back and watch the previous videos. But those are key concepts that you're going to need to know that are going to apply in this video as well. In addition, you really, really want to make sure that you get a good handle on the terminology of these four particular account types, revenue, expense, asset, and liability. We talked about assets and liabilities in week one. We talked about revenues and expenses in week two. So you can go back and review those videos, but real quickly here, I put um, the very basic definitions that I want you to think about when you think about these terms. So take a picture of the slide, write it down, make sure that you have this accessible so that you can refer back to these terms as you're doing your analysis of adjusting entries. Now, in the previous videos, we talked about the first two types of adjusting entries, which are prepaid expenses and unearned revenues. Um, now, in this video, we are going to discuss accrued expenses and accrued revenues. Now, um, in these are, are situations where the revenue or expense happens first and then the cash is received or paid later. And this word accrued, that's a word you're going to hear uh, periodically in accounting, but that term accrue means to accumulate, to accumulate. So with accrued expenses, that's the first one we're going to talk about in this video, is um, when you accumulate expenses first, and then pay them later. Okay, so you accumulate expenses first to be paid later. That's what accrued expenses are. Now, to refresh your memory, expenses again are goods and services used up by a business. And the rule is that they are recorded when they are used. And the fancy word we use in accounting for that is incurred. Okay, we record expenses when they are used or incurred, and that follows the matching principle. And again, we talked about in the last video, but we want to make sure that we always match revenues with the related expenses so that we know exactly what we use up in order to generate our revenues. So an example of this accrued expenses is employee wages. Okay. Now what happens is employees work all week first and then they get paid afterwards. Okay, whether that's every week, every two weeks, whatever system, you know, your your employer has worked out, the employee has to work before they get paid. Now, if all of that is happening at the same time, right? The employee works and they get paid and all of that happens in the same time period, then you don't have an issue. You don't need an adjusting entry. But if that is happening in two different periods, that's when you need an adjusting entry. So again, same example, employees work all week and they get paid at the end of the week. Well, a lot of times um, when we're doing adjusting entries, it really helps to use a timeline to look at, okay, well, what exactly is happening this week? Well, let's say this week is the last week of January and the first week of February. And we know that employees always get paid at the end of the week on Saturday. Okay, so payday is over here. But the employees have worked this entire time, right? Sunday through Saturday. 
And because of how the calendar fell, right, we have Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday in January, and we have the rest of the week happening in February. So you have a situation where there's an expense that's happening over two different accounting periods and the cash is happening in one period, but some work is being done in the previous period. So what you need to look at closely is this special day right here, okay? That special day is month end, okay? That's the end of the accounting period. So what we have to do is look at, sorry, we have to look at what happened during this period of time, okay? What happened on these days in January because I know I'm not going to record payday until they're paid in February, but I've got to record something happening here in January. So again, as we discussed in the previous video, every adjusting entry does two things. It records revenue or expense and it adjusts asset or liability. So let's think about what happened during that period of time. Okay, well, during this period of time right here, these first three days of the week that happened to fall in January, we used our employees, the company used the services of their employees, so therefore, the company owes them money. Okay, so we've got some key terms here that should alert us to what is happening and how do we record it for accounting purposes. So we have, is this revenue or expense? Well, are we providing services? Or are we using services? Well, we're using our employees, so that would be an expense, wages expense, okay? We're using our employees. Now, the next question is, does this impact um, future benefit, which is asset, or does this impact debt, cause us to owe something, which is liability? Okay, well, in that case, this is actually liability, okay? Because we have we owe our employees wages. So that's wages payable, and our liability is increasing because we owe them money. So let's see how that fits into our transaction analysis to make sure that all of that works, right? So we have... Uh, liability called wages payable increasing because we owe our employees money that we're going to pay them in February. And then there's also an expense because we're using their services. Um, an expense always decreases equity. So if you look at your, does this fit into the accounting equation? Yeah, we have nothing on this side and we have an increase in liability, a decrease in equity, and these cancel each other out. So that becomes a net effect of zero on this side. So our accounting equation balances. Okay. So now let's actually put that into a journal entry, all right? So first thing we got to do is identify our accounts. We, we identified that they were wages payable, which is a liability that we owe, and wages expense, our equity or expense account, which, um, <clears throat> so these are the two accounts we're going to be using. The next thing we need to do is to figure out, well, our debit credit rules. How does that work? Well, we have wages payable, a liability increasing. So we go, okay, liability increasing is a credit. So we put wages payable with a credit here. We also have wages expense, which is equity and expense always decreases equity. So if we go to our debit credit rules, we have equity decreasing is a debit. So we have wages expense and the debit here. And again, these two account names sound very similar, right? They both have the word wages in it, but they're different, right? Wages payable is the liability. It's the wages you owe. Wages expense is your expense, which means that that's the services you used. So again, pay close attention to account names. They may sound similar, but you also have to pay attention to account types and how they're different. Okay, last we want to make sure our debits equal our credits. Oh, and yeah, they do. We're good to go. Okay, so again, that's accrued expenses. 
where we use our employee services first and then pay them later. And so again, what happens, the adjusting entry is going to be to record the expense and the liability, what you owe them. And then next month when you pay it, then you're, you're going to pay your cash, your cash is going to go down, and then your liability is also going to go down. You won't owe them anymore. Um, but, but we can talk about that, that entry later. All right. Now let's move on to the other type of accrued, which is accrued revenue. And again, that word accrued means accumulate, but this time we're accumulating revenue to be received later. So we're going to do work first, and then our customer is going to pay us later. Now again, these terms, we should know them by now, but revenues are goods or services provided to customers, and we record them when the work is performed. Okay, Not when we receive the cash from the customer, not even when we send the bill to the customer. We technically should record it when we perform the work. So when you cut hair, when you mow a lawn, when you paint a house, whatever service it is that you're doing, you record it at when you do that work. Now, um, an example of that is when you've got like work in progress, right? You're, you're working on something um, and, and it's a project that takes a while. So if you do the work and then your customer pays you later and it all happens in the same time period, then you don't have an issue. You don't need an adjusting entry because it's all happening in the same time period. The issue is when it covers two different time periods. So let's look at this example. Okay, Paul's Painting Company takes a week to paint a house. The customer pays when the job is complete. So Paul's Painting has to paint the house first. They have to perform the service first, and then the customer will pay them when the job is complete afterwards. If all this happens in the same month, no problem. But let's look at this issue, okay? Let's say here, right, Paul's Painting Company takes a week to paint a house. The customer pays when the job is complete. So let's say they are painting a house during this week. And again, the timeline is really important. You want to draw out and see, okay, well, well, what exactly happened and at what point during this time period? So um, if this week happens to fall in January and February, well then some work is being performed in one accounting period, but you're not going to get paid until it's done, which is in the next period. So again, there's that very important date right here, month end. We have to look at, okay, well if I know I'm not going to record the cash until the end of the month or until February, but something happened in January, I gotta look at what happened here. So what happened there? Um, that's again, you want to um, do your analysis. Of, is this revenue or expense? Or is it asset? And is it asset or liability? Well, let's think about this. Um, are we, let's see what happened here then is in January, we performed a service, painted a house, and we're gonna get paid in the future when we're done, okay? So again, there's some kind of key words here of what's happening that's gonna help us with an analyzing what's happening in our adjusting entry. So, is this revenue or expense? Well, it's revenue because we provided or performed a service. So we know that it's revenue. Now, is it asset or liability? Is this impacting a future benefit? Or is it causing us to, or is it impacting some kind of a debt, something that the company Paul's Painting owes? Well, it's a future benefit because it's an account receivable, a promise of getting future cash from a customer. And our, our future benefit is increasing because we're going to now the, the, the customer now is going to be giving us money so that our future benefit of or that future cash is going up. Now, one thing I think is really important for you guys to remember is to always make sure we are accounting from the point of view of the company, 
not the customer. Okay, so make sure that you are accounting from the point of view of the company. Yes, the customer owes us money, but remember, we're talking about well, what, what then what happens with the the company itself. Well, the company company doesn't owe anybody money. The company is getting a future benefit. So make sure you're paying attention to what point of view you are accounting from. And then if you're doing your analysis, you've got, um, you want to make sure that everything plugs into the accounting equation properly to assets. Do our assets equals our liabilities plus equity? Well, we have our future benefit of accounts receivable increasing because we're going to be getting money in the future. And then it's a revenue and revenue always increases equity. So we have the asset side increasing and then we have the liability and equity side increasing. So our accounting equation balances. We are good to go. Now let's put together the actual adjusting entry. Okay, so first thing we got to do is identify our accounts and we've identified that we have an account receivable and revenue. And we've also determined that our account receivable is an asset increasing because we're going to be getting cash in the future. Now we need to apply our debit credit rules. Well, accounts receivable is an asset increasing, so our asset increasing is a debit. So you see here, accounts receivable, we've got a debit. For revenue, well, revenue is an equity account, and equity always increases, I'm uh, sorry, revenue always increases equity. So you go here, we've got equity. Increasing is a credit, so we're gonna put revenue as a credit. And then we want to make sure, do our debits equal our credits? Yep, they do. So our entry is balanced. Again, that is accrued revenues. Um, and like we said, accrued revenues are a situation where you earn the revenue first and then you receive the cash on it later. So what's going to happen, right? We've recorded now this. We've recorded this, we've recorded um, asset and revenue for the work that we did, and we're going to get paid in the future. Then in February, when you actually receive the cash, you're going to record that you got cash, and you're going to record that asset going down because you received the future benefit. You received that the cash that you, that you ultimately wanted. So... Again, that is um, a summary of accrued expenses and accrued revenues. And I hope this makes it clear for you as you are analyzing our adjusting entries in class this week. Thanks a lot. And if you have any questions, let me know.